So it's been a month since Anne Tembe fell to her death from a Cape Town hotel. Now, since then, there's been weeks of speculation about the circumstances surrounding her death and the nature of her relationship with rapper AKA. Some have questioned whether it was an abusive relationship, whether he's told the truth about what he knows to have happened in those hours leading up to her passing in Cape Town. Today, we speak to the man himself from his home in Johannesburg to get his version of events. Keenan, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. you for speaking to us. Thank you for taking the time. I think a lot of people are wondering at this point, because we haven't seen or heard much of you, a lot of people wondering, especially your fans, how you are doing. How I'm doing, um, well, obviously I'm in a state of grief, sadness. Um, for me, Anele was, uh, still is, my whole life, uh, my wife, uh, or my wife-to-be. Um, I wake up every day, I'm numb. I, I, I find it very hard to get up in the mornings, to make it through the day. Um, I'm in grieving and in mourning. Um, there's so much noise around everything. There's so much that's going on uh, that it's, it's hard for me to, 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 to take the time and to find the, the time and the peace to mourn and to grieve. Um, my thoughts are also with, with her family. It's not just my loss, it's their loss as well. Um, with my family, it, it, it has been very, very, you know, difficult for, for, for us as well because at the end of the day, we were going to become one family. Mm. Um, and I just feel like all that potential and my whole life has kind of been pulled out from underneath me. So I, I, I never wanted to, to lay things bare. I never wanted to really be in this position and have to explain. I just wanted to mourn and grieve. But I think the events of the last week or the last two or the month or whatever you want to call it has really put me in a position whereby I now need to tell the truth um, and I need to speak and my voice needs to be heard because people want to know from me um, you know, what my uh, explanations or my answers to their questions uh, are. And going into this interview, it's very, very important for me to, for people to understand Anele was my and is my absolute world and for me it's about preserving her memory her legacy and for her to be remembered in the right way and i will do anything to protect that and that she's remembered in the right way which is creative fun talented the most beautiful girl i, I ever laid my eyes on so it's hard for me to sit here and talk to you tonight um and i just want people to know that i'm and and, and myself my family and also my thoughts go out to the Dembe family. We are grieving, we are hurt, we are in a place, I'm in a place that I've never been in before. It just feels so desperate for mm -hmm. me, yeah. And let's talk about that day. It was the 11th of April mm -hmm. in Cape Town when yeah. a lot of us started to see the news on social media. <coughs> uh, people started tweeting saying something has happened outside a hotel. And then came the tweets that said, AKA's fiance is thought to have jumped from a hotel. Yeah. Where were you as all of that was happening on that day? Well, I think it's important to tell the story of the whole day. Um, I had gone to Cape Town with her. Um, we had uh, work, you know, she had accompanied me to many of my, my work engagements. So it was a great day. We went down to Cape Town. Um, <laughs> now that I think about it, we had the best time. Um, myself and Anele always had the best time. Uh, she was full of life, laughter. Uh, we went to the VNA in the day. We had lunch with our friends. We went shopping. We went back to the hotel. She got dressed. She looked beautiful as always. And then we went to work. Um, this is on the Saturday. I this is on. This is on the Saturday. Saturday night. Uh, a Friday. A Friday, if mm. I recall correctly. And we went to, to, to work. Um, we came back around about um, you know, half past 11, so I had obviously it's curfew. Um, we came back uh, with some friends, and then the friends left. And then prior to that you know, week of us going down to Cape Town, myself and Anela had been having a particularly difficult week in our relationship, you know, lots of um, disagreements, arguments, and so forth. But we felt that you know, we had been you know, kind of given some sort of reprieve um, it was a good day, so we took it upon ourselves to say, all right, well, 
now we're together, there's nobody around, change of scenery, let's begin, you know, talking about our relationship, because we had, you know, just uh, become husband and wife. I had just paid Lowell, uh, I think two weeks previously. So we were looking at our lives through that lens. How, how can we fix our problems? How can we go forward and how can we build on the issues, um, or build past the issues that we have in our relationship? What were the issues? Before I, before I get to that. So we sat down, we spoke, um, and naturally we started disagreeing again. Arguments um, and, and things you know, got more heated to the point of it was you know, the early hours of the morning. So at one point, um, when things really kind of started to take a turn for things, I decided it would be best that I remove myself from the situation. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to you know, gather my belongings, I'm going to leave the room, book myself into another room, and hopefully things will, will you know, simmer down. Um, got to a point where we argued more, and she, you know, one the thing that really breaks my heart, and I still, you know, I, I have my her ring, uh, you know, with me. It's really the last, the only thing that, that I have of hers, uh, of her belongings. And she, she took it off, and she, she kind of threw it at me, um, and we said, you know, very mean things to each other. And so I left the room, <coughs> came back to the room because I had taken her phone. And obviously, uh, you know, we continued to argue. Um, and then things took a turn for the worst when, you know, we had gotten to a point in the argument where Anale had kind of threatened to, to, to kill herself or to, you know, jump off the balcony. She didn't say in, in those words, though. Um, and I had called uh, reception for security, and uh, I kind of tried to remove myself from the situation again, and, and out of, I think maybe out of panic, I didn't want to be there or kind of feel that this was going to happen. I, I kind of wanted to remove myself from it, so I went to the bathroom, and um, you know when I <coughs> when I came out of the bathroom. She she wasn't she wasn't in the room. So so she wasn't she wasn't she wasn't in the room and um, so then I look around the room and she's not there and um, I go to the balcony and I look over the balcony and I look down to the to the street and that's that's where she was. So you were in the hotel room, but not where she was at the time that she said to have jumped? The, the, the events are blurry because I didn't really lay eyes on her from the time I made the call to security. Um, I, I, I kind of, the, the phone was over here and the balcony is over that side, so when I made the call, I kind of just tried to get, get, get out of the situation. I don't know whether it was during the time I was on the phone that she had jumped or whether it was when I was in the bathroom or, or, or whatever the, the, the sequence of events are, but that's how I remember it. So it must have been um, a disagreement that lasted several hours then, because you said you came back from work, which you, you were gigging in Cape Town. Yeah. So you get back to the hotel, you start to talk about these issues that I'd like us to get into at some point. Mm -hmm. From then to when she eventually, as we're hearing now, jumps from the balcony, mm -hmm. which was like daylight hours, Yes. Were you with her all the time, except for that brief time where, of course, you went back to the other room that you'd secured? No, I, I, I was in the room. The last time I remember seeing her was when she had walked past me from the door towards the balcony, uh, saying she is going to, to, to jump off the balcony, she's going to kill herself, at which point I called, um, I called reception for, for security to come up because in my mind I'm thinking, well, I must be the reason that you know, she's in this state, or she's very, very upset. So I need some assistance. I need to call downstairs and see if somebody can come intervene. And I put the phone down, I went to the bathroom just to kind of take a breather and just, and when I came back, she was gone. Where was the help then between when you go to the bathroom and when you make this grim discovery? Did anyone actually come from the hotel? No, nobody came. And. A lot has been said about the nature of the relationship, right? A lot of people were seeing in the last week or so videos of other disagreements that you've had. A lot of it 
seeming to be quite in the extreme as far as disagreements go. What were the issues that you were trying to iron out in Cape Town? I think as a couple, we did have a very tumultuous relationship. Um, I put that down to being about passion. We're both very passionate people. We passionately loved each other very, 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 very much. That is why we wanted to build our whole lives together. But I think passion goes both ways um, in, in this case. Disagreements that we had could be quite intense. Um, and on that day when we, when we were speaking, it was about a variety of issues in our, in our relationship. Issues that I, I don't feel I really want to lay bare because Anela is not here to speak for herself. Anela is not here to give her side of, of the story. But what I can tell you is it was like any other relationship in which there were problems and issues and insecurities and just, just things that, that, that people, you know, especially with our life, me being in the public eye, and that, you know, were going on in our relationship. And there was a lot of passion. And speaking to the images um, of the last week, I understand what it looks like. I understand that I need to own that. I understand that I could imagine I, you know, I, I regret it and, and I can only imagine how I must have frightened her, how scared she must have been. And it's not something that I'm proud of. And it's something that I need to own. And if I could re redo it or, 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 or get to that point again or go back in time, which is what I keep saying to myself about a lot of things when somebody passes like this. I keep thinking, could I have done something different? Could I have done better? Could I have done this or could I have done that? And that kind of torments me every, every single day. But I know that what I am not is an abuser. I am not somebody who would abuse Anele because I treated her like gold. She was my everything and still remains my everything. I would wake up every single day thinking, how, can you, how, how happy could I make this person today? That was my mission. And that for me is why I'm, I'm so heartbroken and why I'm so completely shattered is because that big part, that, that piece, that center of my life is, is gone. So I understand how it looks, but I want people to know that I, I loved her with all my heart. And that is why she said yes to marrying me. That is why her family said yes to me paying Lawala for her. And that is why ultimately we wanted to build the rest of our lives together. And uh, we'll go back to the hotel uh, in a moment, but just on, because we've touched on it now, the issue of the videos. You say, mm. yes, you treat, she meant the world to you. Yes. You cherished her. But when you watch the videos, I mean, one, I'll just bring up one where a man who is unidentified is in the room trying to subdue Anele. And yes. you're presumably on the other side of the camera. And she yeah. keeps saying, you don't know what mm. he's done or he's doing to me. Mm -hmm. Now... To those of us looking in from the outside, do, those don't sound like the words of a woman who was mm -hmm. well taken care of mm -hmm. and always felt loved. Mm -hmm. I can understand how that looks um, and I can understand why people would think that way. Just to give some context into that day of that video. We had come from a, a, a work in Pretoria, we had come back from a show and that, that night, Anele had actually tried to... We'll get through it in, in, in this interview, I'm sure. Anele had, had tried to jump out of the car while it was moving, for instance, that night. And we had had you know, more disagreements. And, and when she says, you don't know what he's doing to me, I cannot, I cannot speak to that. Because like I said, she's not here. And I can only wonder what she was talking about, what she was referring to. But what I do know that is that I loved her and I did everything I could to take care of her and I cherished her, you know. Um, myself and her father had a great relationship. Me and him used to talk all the time about the issues in our relationship. My mother at some point was, 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 was very vocal with Anele. So we, we had also not just lived our relationship in this little bubble between each other. We had also spread it around in our family and whenever there was conflict, we had tried to resolve it through our family as well. Interesting that you mention an incident where you say she tried to jump out of a car, I'm assuming. This was a moving car. Yeah. And again in Cape Town, she then said she threatened to jump off the balcony, which at this point 
is what is said to have happened. Mm. What do you say to people who say then, if she had shown behavior that suggested that she was likely to harm herself, why would you leave her alone for any amount of time mm -hmm. when she had said to you, <coughs> I will jump off the balcony? Well, in my past experience with Anele, um, it wasn't the first time that she had attempted to do that or had threatened to do that. Um, she had done that here in this home upstairs before. Um, she had over the phone threatened or I don't know, I don't want to use the word threatened uh, because it, it feels like she's holding something against me, but at times it could feel like that. Threatened to drive her car into a wall. She had to be talked down off a ledge at the Hilton in, in Durban. Um, and she had also spent some time in, 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 in psychiatric care in, in Durban after that incident. So you need to understand that I am a person who was with somebody who had gone through this before and for me, I felt like in that moment, I didn't really believe that Anneli would do that, right? Because I'd been through it before with her. But at the same time, I felt like I wanted to remove myself from it. Because if I'm the cause of this, then something in me said, just get away. Get away. I shuddered to think what the situation may have been. You know, we, we don't know what the outcome may be had I made a different choice, but we'll never know. But that is the choice that I made. I, I, I wanted to get away from it, remove myself from the situation. And in my mind, I thought I was going to come out of that bathroom and she'd still be there. Do you regret leaving her alone for those? I, I, regret, I regret many things, not just that. And in the hours that after, after it happened, I thought about not just that night, but I thought about my entire relationship with her since the very start of, of when I knew her. Um, could I have done this? Could I have helped her like this? Could I have taken her disposition a bit more seriously? You know, um, her medication, uh, she, she, you know, sh should I have been more pushy with her taking her medication? Should I have paid more attention to the way I spoke to her? Things like the, the video of, of the door, for instance. You know, your, your mind casts back to those types of things and thinks, what could I have done for a different outcome? Why did you break the door? Because that's been one of the most shocking images that people have seen. I mean, it's, for those who haven't seen it, I'll just describe it. It's a door with a hole punched right in the middle. According to what's in the papers, she had gone into the room, yep. locked herself in yep. to get away from you in this very house, I assume. Yes. Because you <coughs> had again had some sort of altercation, some sort of uh, disagreement that escalated quite quickly. Yes. Well, that is the case. Um, like I said before, lots of passion in our relationship, lots of stubbornness, um, emotions running high. And it was an argument that we were having, like many of the arguments we have had before. To tell you the truth, I cannot recall what we were arguing about. Um, but what I do remember is breaking that door. I can only imagine how scared she must have been. I can only Im imagine how terrified I must have made her. And that's something that I, I, I own and I wish I could change. And my heart breaks just, just, just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And people make mistakes, and that's a mistake that I made, but there are consequences for mistakes. And I'm you know, paying, paying for those consequences. You speak about a, a, a passionate relationship, mm -hmm. many relationships, a passionate, very few people br end up with their partner locked in a room. And so passionate are you about an issue that you don't even recall, as you say now. Mm -hmm that you go to the extent of breaking a door. Mm -hmm. So was your passion violent? In that moment, definitely. In that moment, I took it too far. In that moment, I scared her. In that moment, I wasn't the man I was supposed to be towards her. Was it the first time you had scared her in that way? Not in that way, no. I don't recall scaring her by breaking down a door before, no. Had you ever hit her? No. What, apart from the incident with the door, what other violent, maybe not you hitting her, but what other violent incidents do you recall between the two of yourself? Define violence. Where, for example, there's breaking of doors, there's the trashing of a room, oh, that meet in stuff. the house, or at a hotel. It had, it had happened before. 
but it happened before on both sides. Um, myself and Anele, like I said, were, were very stubborn, very steadfast, um, and could be quite volatile. Were there drugs involved? Drugs involved in our relationship? Did the two of you uh, take drugs either together or as individuals? Well, for me, when it comes to the issue of drugs, I've been in the, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry, for 15, nearly, about 15, nearly 20 years now. Um, have I tried drugs before? Yes, I have. I can say that without question. Um, on the part of Anele, like I said, Anele is not here, and I'm not going to speak and delve into that on Anele's part, because my job is to protect her memory, my job is to protect her legacy, but I can only speak for myself. So, obviously being in this entertainment industry, being a musician for so long, you're s exposed to these things, um, you're around it, and I have tried them before, yes. But more specifically, was there drug use during your relationship from your side then, because you say you won't speak for her, especially on the days where no. there were these, uh, these clashes? No, we, 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 ha we, we went out, we would have a good time, we'd come back home, most of the time everything would be great, we'd smile, we'd laugh, and in those times where things didn't go well, things could get quite volatile. What do you say to someone who's going to watch this conversation and say they find it very hard to believe that this was just normal couple disagreements or just normal anger outside of the abuse of any other substance, be it uh, drugs, alcohol or whatever, when you look at just how high-pitched everything was from what we've seen? I think that people haven't seen everything. Um, I think that... For me, experiencing it and living in it, to know the whole story, um, everything that, that encapsulates myself and Anela's relationship um, is privy only to us. Only we know the full story. What's out there and what people consume um, is unfortunately the, 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 the tip of the iceberg of what they m may, may consume. Um, so I can understand them having that type of, of, of judgment or that type of opinion. But all I can do is, is tell the truth and, and, and how I live through it with my, with my wife. And here's the, the difficulty, I suppose, in you telling the truth at this point, is that we sit here, unfortunately, in a situation where a young woman has died. There yes. are questions about how she died, mm -hmm. and you say you are telling your truth, and she's not I here. Said, I didn't say I'm telling my truth. You're telling the truth. I'm telling the okay. truth. Okay. Because there's, there's, not, there's, no, there's no my truth and her truth. There's only one, the truth. Yeah. And the issue I'm saying with that is, for those of us who weren't part of your relationship is, mm. we don't know if this is the ultimate truth precisely because she's not here to either corroborate or refute what you're saying. Yeah, yeah she's, not, she's not here. So, like I said, uh, we're having a conversation today and you're posing me the questions that a lot of people want to know. And, and, and I never wanted to be in the situation where I have to lay these things bare. I am grieving, I'm hurting, I'm mourning. Worse than I've, I've, I can't do anything, I can't perform, I can't work, I can't do anything. Now I'm, 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 I'm saying that because I cannot function. I cannot function as a person without Anele. Anele was such a big part of me, of my existence, that I am still trying to come to terms with what my life is like without her. And that is really where I am. So in amongst all of this noise, um, I found it that I need to sit down now, and it's been a month, and it, if it were up to me, I would take as much time as I can to grieve, or to give the family time to grieve. But that isn't the case, because I'm a public figure. So I have to, I have to speak, and I have to answer questions, and that's what I'm trying to do to the best of my ability. I wish Anella was here, but she's not. And you say, Keen, that you, you love Danele, that you guys had a passionate relationship, mm -hmm. to use your word. Do you accept that it's quite possible to be in love with a person and equally be in a toxic relationship? I think that's possible, yes. Is that how you would describe your relationship? No. I would describe my relationship with her as loving. Um, we adored each other. We absolutely adored each other. Um, every day. I, was, I was so lucky because, um, you know, when lockdown started, 
I got to spend every single day with her for the last year. And I really got to know her on so many levels. And she was, she was amazing. I just, it, she was everything that I ever wanted. I don't know where I'm going to find another Anele. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to compute it. My, my mind and my soul doesn't know how to deal with. I, I just feel like I'm just floating from moment to moment, and and it's it's a pain that I, 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 I will change me for the rest of my life. I'll never be the same again. So, to to label it toxic, no. Did we have difficulties? Yes. But is it not possible for the two to coexist, the love and toxicity? When yes, you've got the loving moments, which are great. But you also have the extreme lows, which aren't just the usual, I'm not taking your calls. These are lows that involve the breaking of doors. They involve videos of a woman crying hysterically on the floor, calling out for her mother. They involve, um, now we're hearing reports of her friends saying, in fact, what was going on was abuse. You're saying that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. But how do you... Let me phrase it this way. How do you balance those two? Because you can't toxicity look at one without the other. Are yes. you talking about toxicity mm -hmm. and love? Like I said, it's possible to, to be in a toxic relationship and be in love. I just wouldn't characterize our relationship as that relationship that was toxic and in love. I believe that our relationship was one that we were building towards the future. It was one in which we took the ultimate step to be with each other forever, for the rest of our lives. And, and, and one that I, I, I put my marker in the sand and I said, this is going to be my life partner. Mm -hmm. And that is how I feel about it. Um, I, don't, I, don't wa I, I, I cannot reduce our relationship just to a toxic in love. It was a serious thing. It was my wife forever. So I, I, I feel like to draw parallels like that, yes, you can talk about the highs and the lows. And to the outsider, you know, it, it might seem extreme, but in our reality, we were 99% of the time in love and things were amazing and we were building a future together. She was in her early 20s, you were in your early 30s. Correct. A lot of conversation about the age difference between the two of you mm -hmm. subsequent to her passing. Mm -hmm. Did that play a role in your differences in particular? I think it, it, it did, but it also enhanced our relationship. I think that it was perfect for us. Um, she enjoyed the, the, the difference she, in, in what she was looking for in somebody. She was looking for somebody to settle down. She was looking for somebody who was, uh, kind of know, knew who they were and knew where they were headed. Um, and for me, I, 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 I was so lucky to find a girl that was young and wanted to settle down, so I counted myself very, very lucky. Um, but the age difference also had its shortcomings in, you know, not just her, but me as well, in terms of patience, in terms of communication, understanding, love language, you know, uh, expressing each other, you know, sometimes we didn't get each other. So obviously those issues were there. You've alluded to her struggles to a degree with issues around mental health, right? Where you yeah. say she was on medication. Yeah. I don't want to misquote you here. Was there anything similar on your end? In terms of being under medication? Me mental health wise, are you, do you have issues that you're dealing with? I, 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 either depressed, either bipolar, that sort of thing. <clears throat> no, I don't have any diagnosis. Um, I've, I haven't been diagnosed with any mental illness. Um, but then again, um, maybe, maybe there are people walking around who have these conditions and don't know them yet. Um, I have sought, obviously, the, the help of a psychologist. Um, and um, I've been doing therapy sessions. Um, they, she says, she says, you know, I need to go on medication. I need to go on antidepressants now. Is a suggestion that she's making. But as far as while myself and Anneli were in a relationship, I was never diagnosed with anything or taking medication for any mental um, um, kind of um, diagnosis or situation. Do you think you have an anger problem? At times, yes, I do. I do think so. I think that I can be over the top sometimes, and I feel like I'm a work in progress. You know, um, it was something that we spoke about myself and Anele a lot of the time. We spoke about how do we resolve conflict in our relationship, um, and I always strived to to to. 
to, to communicate better, uh, to be better, and to do better by her. Did you start, and you started that work, at what point in your relationship did you start working on that aspect? Maybe a, f a few months into our relationship, we, we really, because we knew we could see where this was going and we, we really, really felt special about each other. And we really knew this is potentially, this could be my husband or this could be my wife. We knew pretty early. So we kind of started taking a very serious um, view of our relationship very early mm. and started trying to mold each other into where we ultimately wanted to go um, in, in life. But why decide to, to marry when <coughs> there was already these very serious signs of things that had to be worked on by your version on both sides? Why, why not marry? Because when, I, I don't want to sound romantic, but for me, I had found the one and she had found the one. And we viewed it as, well, we've got issues, but we are going to work through them because that's what p married people do. That's what people who are not married do. We work through our issues. Um, we sought the help of our parents. Um, we were, we were actually uh, due for, for counseling, for marriage counseling, uh, in, in, the, in the coming week um, after this, this had happened. So the steps were there for us to try and resolve our, our differences. Um, we had sought spiritual guidance uh, from pastor. So we had tried to make those steps. Unfortunately, we didn't you know, get the time to, to, to do them because ultimately uh, our lives together were, was, was cut short. Let's go back to ultimately, because that's where we started off. The, the morning <coughs> of what had been these hours of disagreement and when you ultimately go again, just to recap, go into the bathroom, you come back and she's no longer in the room. You look down and you then see her lying on the side of the road, at least from the pictures that we saw is where she was. Yeah. What goes through your mind in that moment? Mm, um, oh, just, I just just started screaming, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, it's it's uh, something that's ingrained in my mind forever. It's not easy to think about, it's not easy to talk about. Um, I remember going out onto the balcony, there was a, by the time I had made it out to the balcony, there was a gentleman to my left was already on his balcony, uh, just to the side and one up. So I looked out and I looked down and as I kind of reeled back, um, he was standing there. Um, I don't remember saying it, but I just started screaming, oh my God, oh my God, and just losing my mind. And as soon as, uh, you know, I, I kind of got, made sense of what was happening, it maybe after about 10 seconds or 15 seconds or so, uh, I ran next door uh, to where my friend was, started banging on his door, just hysterical, and he opened the door, he dragged me up off the floor, and that's where the whole nightmare began. Everything just started moving, and people, and my friend went down uh, to, to downstairs, and I wanted to go down, um, but they said, no, don't, you know. Um, Do you stay in a room? No, I was next door, so I'd ran out of our room next door to, mm -hmm. to my friend's room. And um, 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 they had said she was still alive. So that made me go even crazier because um, I had seen her. So I started thinking, there's no way. We were staying on the 10th floor. There's no way she could have survived that. Why are you telling me this? Like, you're only messing with me. Don't tell me something like that, you know. And then uh, I stayed in the room, um, and then they kept me up there, and then at some point, uh, my friend came up, and I could just see him. He just looked at me, he just shook his head like this, and I just, I just broke down, and that's what happened. And was it your friend who was then updating you on her ha being alive at the time when people got to her? They, they, one of them had gone down to the scene and had come back up and said, you know, the paramedics are working on her. 
and she's still alive. And that just, it even made me even more crazy because how could she survive that? And now you're kind of giving me this hope, you know? Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I'm just totally dis disorientated. Um, so now when he goes back downstairs, now my head is thinking, oh, please make it, please, can she be alive, please? And, but I knew, I knew in my heart I'd seen it and in that brief moment that I'd looked over and I just, it just was so hor horrifying for me. And just to see her like that, it was, I don't have the words to describe it. Um, and then he came back up and he told me, um, he shook his head and, and that's when I knew she, she was gone. Do you remember who, outside of your friends who were at the hotel at the time, who you called first? I must have, I must have. The first p person I called, when, when everything had settled down, I think I must have got on the phone for the first time. I must have spoken to my father um, or my mother. No, I didn't speak to my mother. I spoke to my father. They had probably called and said, because my father lives in Cape Town. So at the time, I wasn't, remember, I couldn't find my phone, remember? I had said, you know, I'd come back into the room to look for my phone. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't find my phone. And, and, and so, so, so therefore, when I went into the other room, I still didn't know where my phone was. So I, 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 I don't remember even having my phone. I remember just somebody passing me a phone and saying, your dad wants to speak to you. And Anela's family? How did they find, find out that she had died? I think my father had, had called um, her father. I think he went out into the corridor because I had said to him, you, you need to tell, somebody needs to tell. And I thought that was the right thing. He would have to call. Um, I've never spoken to my father about that call, but um, I, I believe it was him. If I'm so he came to the hotel, your father? My father came to the hotel, yes. And what was the conversation between you and Anela's family the first time you were able to speak directly and how soon after her death was that? <coughs> well, um, after I'd gone to the police station, the detectives had come in and asked me questions and taken pictures of my, I had to take my shirt off and they were taking pictures of my hands to see if there were any marks or under my fingernails, stuff like that they, that they had to do. And then they took me to the station late at night and they made me strip and looked and they did all of that stuff. I went to a different place to stay. Um, my, my, obviously my family had flown in by then um, and my friends and they had arranged for us to stay at a different place. So when I got to that different place, um, the next day her family was flying in from, from Durban. So this is Sunday night, so Monday. Uh, Two of her uncles, her sister, I think two of her sisters, um, came to 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 uh, there to identify her body. Um, and after doing that, uh, my father, I think, was there as well. They did that, and then they came to where we were staying. And we sat down and we spoke a little bit about um, you know condolences and so forth. Obviously, they were visibly hurt, you know, as the, as they should be. And then I brought it up, I said, guys, I, I think I need to also, because they weren't asking me, but I felt it was like I'd, I had to tell them what had happened. So I told them what had happened, as I told you now, and then they kind of nodded, they kind of took it in, and um, we spoke a bit about arrangements to get our body back to, 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 to Durban, and then they left. Was there any blame, especially after you told them that she died after an argument? No. There was no blame. They didn't. They didn't blame me in that moment. They didn't say anything. If anything, they were quite compassionate and, and quite um, mournful with me. They could see I was in a state. I could see they were in a state. So there was none of that. Let's get to the the day of the funeral. Um, Anile's father had a written tribute that was read out by a close family friend. Um, in that tribute, he then says that she was not suicidal, he did not know her to be suicidal, without saying that she had been on drugs, then makes a point about young people and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Why would he, do you think he made that comment? <clears throat> well, I, I can't speculate as to why he would say those things. Um, 
I can't speculate as to why he, that was his statement, but what I do know is that I think culturally, for, for what I can think of, I think culturally, you know, mental health and uh, depression, especially suicide, um, culturally, in terms of the family as well, it's, it's, it's taboo, you know. Um, it's a no-go area. It, it's something that won't happen to our child. It's something that, that couldn't have happened. Um, but I also know at the same time that he was well aware that Anele was on medication. We spoke about it many times. We had spoken about her sometimes getting off her medication, not being on her medication. Um, we had spoken after she had spent a week in uh, uh, a Seco, um, uh, psychiatric hospital in, in Umschlange. Mm -hmm. So he, he was well aware that she had stayed there for a week. Um, he was aware because me and him spoke uh, 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 at length about her suicide attempt in Durban. He was the one who picked her up from hospital. Uh, so we had spoken many times. Um, and it wasn't just us. Um, my mother had sat down with me after the, the Hilton uh, Durban incident. And it sat me down and said, son, are you, are you aware? Are you, uh, you know, aware of what this is going to take? And are you prepared? To, 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 to go the distance with somebody who, you know, with, with a condition like this? Do you understand it? Are you educated enough on the subject? And I said, yes, mom, I, I will do anything for her because I love her and the way you, you raised me and the way I was taught is not to abandon somebody when, they, w when you love them. How could I do that? So I stuck it out and, you know, as it pertains to her dad and what he said at the funeral, he, he knows these things. We've spoken about them. So to say, that he didn't think she was suicidal. I don't know why he's, he said that, but what I do know is that he was well aware of those things that mm -hmm. I've just listed. And on the issue of the drugs, why did he make that point? You say you yeah. are not currently abusing any substances. Yeah. Yeah. You were not on any drugs during your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Was she on substances? Like I said at the start of the interview, um, I'm not going to point fingers at Anele and say she was this or she was that, she was or she wasn't. For me, I'm here to, 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 to speak to protect her, to protect her memory, to protect her legacy. That's what I'm here for. So you would have to ask him why he would say something like that. The people who've questioned your decision to issue a statement on the eve of the Sunday newspaper reports where mm -hmm. two publications, I think, ran with the same story with the videos, which yeah. they had got from a friend or friends of the late Anele, right? Yeah. Why go the route of a statement versus, for example, giving a quote to a newspaper? Were you responding to the inquiry firstly from the newspapers? Were you trying to preempt the reporting? Yeah, I, I had gotten a call on the Saturday morning about the story that was going out on the Sunday. Um, so I had gotten in touch with my, my a member of my team and I told him, look, this is what, what they're saying, so what do we do? Um, upon, you know, a lot of, of our own kind of piecing of things together, uh, we believe that it is someone, they, they've un I don't know who, but they've unlocked Anelis phone, right? And um, the, the papers had been sitting on the story for weeks. Actually, weeks, not, not, it wasn't a, I mean, also when you go to print for a story like that, as I understand, you print on the day, on the Saturday, and then you go to paper. So to ask me in the morning, um, for me it felt very orchestrated, and a lot of what's going on in the media, and also in the inquest, um, feels orchestrated, and it feels like there's ulterior and, you know, kind of... Orchestrated by whom, and Ulterior, uh, you know, different, different forces at play. Um, because for me, I, I thought, let me put the statement out to, to, to preempt and to address what's coming out in the papers tomorrow. I also felt that a quote wouldn't do it justice. I wanted to, to, to state my claim and, and, and say what I had to say. You, you're asking me? My question was, who, oh. A, would oh. lead to the publication of these stories yes. with an agenda? Yeah. And B, what would they have to gain? People who want to blame me, people who want to, 
make me the, the, the person responsible. That would be the motive. And the gains, there are no gains in a situation like this. Anel is gone. We can never bring her back. So I, I wouldn't say it's gains, but I know there's a lot of trauma on, 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 on all sides. I know people are grieving, they're mourning, and I can't understand their process. But what I do know is the people who are, 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 are providing the papers with these you know, videos and these clips, the timing of it um, is something that I'm paying attention to because when Anele was here and things were great and we were in love, you know, but now it's, 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 she's gone, it's, it's all in the papers, it's in the media. Um, uh, my character is being brought into question. So I just question the timing of it and also the timing uh, you know, of the videos and I question the sources as well. So, but do you at the very least understand why there'd be some anger directed at you, be it from I totally your friends and family, given precisely the fact that, yes, these are snippets mm -hmm. into your relationship but these are things that did happen. So mm. when people are trying to make sense, especially of someone who, as we're saying, took their own life, they will try to look at the factors that may have contributed to that. And some would say, in fact, you were a part of that, maybe not entirely, but you may have been part of pushing her over the edge. Myself and Anele's lives were intertwined. We were going to build a life together, like I said before. And it's impossible for whatever she was going through at any given time while she was with me not to have anything to do with me. I was her life, she was my life. However, it's important to look at things in the whole context. Anele had attempted suicide before. Anele had spoken about it many times before. And, 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 and people, people know this. So when those things had happened, you know, there was, there, was, there was no blame on me then. There was no outcry against me then. But Anele made that decision. She took her own life and I'm here to grieve. We all grieving and however they want to express their anger is, is, is not up to me to dictate. I can just interpret it the way that I'm interpreting it. At this stage, do you personally take on any kind of blame, any kind of accountability for where she was mentally at the time of her death? I think it's impossible not to, to, to feel part and parcel of her mental and emotional state, especially if you're trying to build a life with her and be, become her husband and you're headed that way. But I think it's very important to also realize that Anele had a life before me. Anele was Anele before she met me. Um, also within our life, Anele had her own life, her own friends, and she was her own person. She was strong-willed and you couldn't force her to do anything that she didn't want to do. So for instance, even when you talk about drugs and you talk about abuse and so forth, you couldn't force Anele to do anything that she did not want to do. Anele made her own choices. That was the type of woman that she was, and that's why I loved her so much. But it was also the sense, you know, at the source of a lot of difficulties that we had. So to say that I'm responsible, I wouldn't use the word responsible, but I would definitely say that wherever she was at that point in her life, my life and hers were intertwined, yes. I think it's worth saying, though, that you make the point about how she was strong-willed, she was stubborn, she made her own decisions, but the nature of abuse even uh, over and above your situation, is that even the strongest women uh -huh. can be abused yeah. despite being strong. So I think that's worth saying. But another thing that you said is that you think someone has now managed to get into her phone and that's how the videos are now circulating. Yeah. But what we read was that she sent these videos to her friends because mm -hmm. that's how terribly afraid she was of you. So how yeah. can you say for sure that she did not share the videos of her own accord with her friends? Well, as I had read uh, the, the article, um, it said uh, it was an activist, an activist who does not, a, a, a GBV activist who does not want to be named. Is that how they put it? Who is this activist? A nameless activist. 
I don't understand. Well, people could also make the argument. I also that don't understand. Every every source <coughs> is nameless. Everything is nameless. There is no accountability. Nobody is. So for me, I it is in my opinion, um, and also for reasons that I can't disclose. There is information that has shaped my opinion, and that is my opinion. My opinion is that it is not a friend who has decided to step forward all of a sudden. What is that information that has shaped your opinion? I can't disclose that information. Do you believe it is her family that's behind what's going on? I can't point any fingers at her family. When last did you speak to the Dembe family? The last time I sp uh, I've spoken to, to the Dembe family, in particular, uh, particular the fa her father, was the day after the funeral. Um, I had gone to, you know, see him the day after the funeral, uh, before I was supposed to fly back to Joburg. I thought to myself, well, the right thing to do is to, like I had explained, because there was no time for closure, we had had um, the arrangements for the funeral, we had had the arrangements for, you know, every, everything, you know, it was, it was hectic, flying her body up, all of that stuff. So we didn't have the opportunity to sit down. So I took it upon myself to say to him, Baba, listen, let's sit down tomorrow if you can, if you're willing to meet and if you have time. Um, and he said yes. So I went back to their house and I sat down with him and I looked him in the eye and I attempted to give him the closure of what had, um, what had happened. What was that closure? Was it you recounting the events of the day his daughter died? Well, for me, it, 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 if I was a father, which I, I am a father, uh, if something like that had happened, I would want the person who was with her to come to me and explain to me exactly what had happened. So I felt like I shouldn't just, it's the end, it's the funeral, and off I go into the sunset. I need to go to him. He gave me his daughter's hand in marriage, so therefore I need to go sit with him and explain to him and recount to him the events that, that led up to this tragedy. And what did he say to your explanation? How did he receive it? He received it like a grieving father. He received it like a mournful father. He was upset. He was sad. Um, he was heartbroken, and, and so was I. What do you mean upset? Upset more towards sadness and heartbreak, or upset more towards not quite furious, but leaning towards anger? I would say upset in the way that you've just lost your you're a, an amazing, beautiful child that you've, you've, you've kind of, you know, has gone into the world and you've tried your best to, 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 to raise and, and this tragedy has occurred and you're upset in the, in, in the way things have turned out. It's hard to pinpoint to say he felt like this or he was leaning here or leaning here. He was, he's shattered, just like I'm shattered, just like her family shattered, just like my family shattered. In your statement that you've issued, you, you refer to innuendo both in and around the funeral, but also at the service itself. Mm -hmm. What were the comments that you found troubling during the service? For me, it was the, at, at the time, I didn't understand it. I think I have more clarity on why. I can only, like I said to you, I can only guess why. I have my own opinions why. Um, but the innuendos were the ones of... Um, of, of that she did not commit suicide. Also the police minister being there, speaking, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand, I can understand, you know, maybe he's a friend of the family, but the way it was done, I felt like there was kind of an undercurrent of something didn't feel right to me. Explain why that is, especially because not everyone watched the funeral and heard what the minister said, yeah. what were you told about his presence and what did he say that makes you now look at his presence with some degree of suspicion? Well, I, I think it's strange for me because I, um, I am, was a husband. I had paid Lobola, right? So I thought that I would have an opportunity to also speak at a funeral to pay tribute to her. Um, and I communicated that to the, to the family um, through uh, 
you know, uh, the person on my side who was handling things mm -hmm. through to the family. And I got there and I sat down and I opened the, 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 the book of the memorial and my name wasn't there. Were you told it would be? I was under the impression that I would be, be able to speak. I, I have a full, uh, you know, eulogy written out for her. Um, maybe one day people will, will, will hear it. I think, um, I think that uh, people would deserve to hear it one day. Um, but I was, I, I was under the impression that I would. Um, I also was under the impression because of my husband, because I'd taken care of the, because I took care of the funeral mm -hmm. arrangements, made sure that I buried my wife with dignity, with in, 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 in peace and, and, and with love and with care. So I thought I was I, I, I would you know be, be be speaking at the memorial, but we didn't run the memorial side of things. We just took care of the the, the, mm -hmm. the burial. I want us to clarify the issue of the, of the police minister, so that when this yeah no does I'm, I'm it, getting I'm getting there's no it. ambiguity around no, why you were uneasy with that. Yeah, I'm getting to it. <clears throat> so after I see that I'm not being permitted to speak, um, you know I kind of take it in and then I listen to the dads. Um, kind of testimony, um, and then you know about she is she not committing suicide, and then the you know the police minister wasn't um, scheduled to speak, but then they said something about we have to observe him and please he has to come speak, and then up he comes to the podium and starts speaking, and I just felt like there was a lot of um, something didn't feel right to me. Are you accusing the family something. and the minister of anything? I, I said something didn't feel right to me. Something didn't feel right having his presence there along with the father saying that this was not a suicide. The two together for me didn't equate. And did you take that up then in your, your meeting with Anela's father the day after the funeral? Yes, I did. I said, I don't understand. Why, 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 why did you say that she didn't commit suicide? And his explanation to me was that he wants to preserve her memory. He can't have people in the media or social media talking about her that way, having her remembered that way as someone who was kind of uh, depressive or suicidal. He can't, he, you know, there was all these things are being said about his daughter. And at the time, I agreed. You know, it kind of made sense to me, like, okay, protect her memory at all costs and, 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 and so forth. But in these last few weeks, it seems that that's not the case. It seems that as time goes on now, I'm going to seem to have to lay more, you know, out there about the nature of our relationship, um, the nature of our differences, um, and ultimately the nature of, of her and me and, and the life we had together. But how does that link to what happened at the funeral? You now needing to speak and reveal more about your relationship? I also feel that linking to the funeral, we're talking about the minister, right? And we're talking about the innuendos, because that's where the genesis of this discussion was, this question mm. was, right? It's also in the fact that there are certain things which don't sit right with myself and my legal representatives. We, we asking the questions, for instance, like, what, what type of inquest is it when, obviously there's a trial by media, obviously there's going to be a trial by media, but also, for instance, Zinle being interviewed, detectives flying up from Cape Town to interview Zinle. Why? What, what is the direction of this inquest? Am I a suspect? And also at the same time, as far as I remember, I'm a husband. Mm -hmm. Why am I not being updated on the status of the inquest? Why is it just that side of the family that's being updated? So these are kind of inconsistencies that we kind of are, are kind of perched up and we think, well, hold on a minute, that doesn't quite sit right. How, how do the newspapers know certain information? How do the papers know I was interviewed three times? How? What were how you do the, told how when you were interviewed three times? How, how do the newspapers know that, that Zintler was interviewed by a detective? How do they know that? Those are the questions that we're asking. So when you ask about innuendo, and you ask about him saying that there was no suicide, and you ask about why I, I felt something wasn't right about the minister being there, that's what I'm talking about. 
are you suggesting that the police are out to get you? I'm not suggesting that the police are out to get me. I'm requesting clarity on what is the status of this inquest. I mean, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, there was a quote from the minister. With some, a reporter had asked him about this case and he had kind of, kind of given a, 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 a kind of a non-committed answer. So I, I also need to know, I also need to be updated with the, with the status of autopsy, um, with the status of I the inquest. Why, why are these people being interviewed? And, 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 and what, what am I in the eyes of this inquest? And, 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 and now having the media involved in it, obviously I'm going to start thinking, well, is, is this going to possibly affect the inquest that, that they're having? It's a natural thought to have. But sadly, in the profession that you're in, mm -hmm. anything around your life, I mean, your other breakups, for example, got media attention. So right. it'll no doubt get even more coverage now where your fiancé, your wife, actually, because you're yep. paid Lobola, has now died mm -hmm. and we're seeing all of these allegations being made against you. So that will, without a doubt, I, make I headlines. Do you accept that? I, I accept that and I understand that 100%. So I want to go back to the, the statements and the interviewing of Zintle, who is your ex and the mother of your child. Yes. What was she told when the police contacted her and ultimately got a statement? Why did they say they wanted to speak with her? They say they, I, I haven't spoken at length with her. Um, most of the communication was done between the detective and her lawyers, but from, you know, speaking um, to my legal uh, representative, it was along the lines of, has he ever been abusive towards you? Has he ever hit you? Stuff like that. And um, she, she, she said no. Have you taken up your questions directly with the police? I know you've got... I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of... How do you say this? I'm in the process of, of asking some, some questions through my legal representatives. We're not accusing the police of anything. We just want clarity. We want to know where we stand. And I want to know where I stand because I, can't, I, need, I need to be updated. I have lost as well. I've lost the love of my life. I also want to know what's going on with my own life. To whom are you asking the questions? To the minister? To the, to the prosecution. If there is a, a you know, to, to the people who, who, who prosecute the cases. Um, because ultimately an inquest is to gather evidence and then build a case and then launch an investigation. As I understand it, I'm not a legal expert. But we'll be asking uh, questions in, in the right legal format through the right legal channels to the right people. So as you s sit here today, knowing what we've all seen published in the media, Mm -hmm. Can you confidently say that there is nothing else that will come out, either through the media or that the police may bring forward, to contradict your version of what happened on the day Anneli died? If there's anything that could come out to contradict what I have told people that happened that day, is, is there any chance of that happening? Yes. Is that your question? No. I, I have it burnt into my head, into my memory. This is the most traumatic space of, 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 of you know, when, when, when an hour or wh whatever, two hours, or whatever the, 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 the time frame may be of my life. Um, I've given three statements, three statements on the same day. And then uh, I've, 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 I've actually given statements on paper. I've had to recount the story many times. I've recounted the story with the same detail mm -hmm. and I want people to understand that I may have my flaws and Anneli may have had her flaws, but it's just not possible. It's just not possible for, for, for anything other than what happened that day to have happened that day. I love this woman so much. I loved her with everything. She, she, I am, I'm, 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 I don't have the words. I, I, I wish I could, I wish I had a time machine. I wish I could go back. I wish I could change things, but I can't. And, and it doesn't feel real to me. Nothing feels real to me anymore. I'm just floating around, just moment to moment. And 
No. It's so just, there's no there's reason as we sit here today for the police to either take you in for questioning or any other reason? I will cooperate with the police as much as, as, as needed, as I have before. Um, but I do want some clarity on what is going on with the, with the inquest, what is going on, where are we standing, because nobody is giving, because you okay. must remember, my family has lost. They don't want to see their son go through this. They don't want to see this happen to anybody's daughter. So we are on our side, the Forbes family is sitting, and we're not getting any information. We don't know what the status is. We're just kind of being led along through the media, through at the mercy of, of, of other people. Let's talk about you then as we end, talk about the personal implications. So mm -hmm. whether you are named as a suspect mm -hmm. or not in mm -hmm. this matter, the reality is it is bound to have some sort of effect on your work as a performer and entertainer. Mm -hmm. I know you performed in Bloemfontein recently. You've pulled out uh, of Joburg Day for legal reasons while you go through everything that you're dealing with. Well, for, for me, it's not legal reasons. For me, I've pulled out because I need to focus all my efforts on, on trying to find some sort of moment of peace in all the chaos. You know, I kind of need to find the eye of the storm and I, I can't be functioning, I can't be a functioning performer, I can't be a functioning musician, recording, writing, all of that stuff. For me, I need to, to, to step away from that. And I also think on, on the festival side, they understand that and they also understand the, the outcry and the pressure on them. How are you finding that piece? You mentioned therapy, what else are you doing? I'm trying to pray more. I'm really trying to pray more. For me, it's, it's, I'm finding it difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I find myself a bit angry at God for giving me everything. So my faith is being tested. Um, forgive, I feel like he gave me everything and then I gave it to me for two weeks and then just it's gone. I feel sometimes I feel angry at Anele for, for leaving me here. Um, I feel I feel like I try and pray but it's hard it's hard to to walk in faith now um, I also am seeing my my I'm doing psychology uh, therapy every week I'm trying to I'm trying as hard as I can not to go on antidepressants but it's so lonely and my therapist says that I'm only headed that way the same way as Anel if I don't go on medication so those are the, the, the battles that I'm fighting now. Mm. Yeah. I'm also, I, I, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to repurpose my life again. When do you think you'll be able to get to a point where you can again stand in front of a crowd of thousands? Well, that's not really gonna happen now with COVID, not at least until we're vaccinated, but as a performer, when do you think you will be able to get back to that level where you're ready to hit the stage and do your work? Probably when I, at a time when I can learn to live, live with what has happened. Um, the hardest part about this is that it's not, I'm never going to forget it. It's never going to go away. It's always going to be something that I carry with me. And the only way to deal with it is to learn to live with it. And, 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 and being indoors and hiding away and, and, and not living your life, that's not living with it. So it can only be when I learn to live with it and I have no idea when that is going to be. Just finally, before we go, not without going too far back and forth, on the media articles and police, so there's been no police contact with you since the publication of those articles, right? None. There are people who are going to watch this interview when it airs who are going to say, doesn't matter what you've said over the course of this discussion, this interview, they still don't believe you. Mm -hmm. They feel that you are A, guilty of domestic violence or even emotional abuse during your relationship with Anne mm -hmm. Some will say they don't believe that you've been entirely truthful about what happened on the 11th of April in Cape Town in that hotel room. What do you say? Well, to them I say that 
we have to trust the process. Um, we have to trust in the inquest. We have to trust in the detectives and, the, and the, for the law to take its course. That's all we can really do. Um, I, I, I really have no other option than that, is, is for the truth to come out, and the truth is going to take some time. But I would rather it be detectives who are dedicated, which they are, people who have many years' experience on the job and who are thorough and will treat this incident with the respect that it deserves. And I just need to stay strong and get through that. As far as the people, what they think of me and what they will deduce from this interview, um, they're entitled to their opinions. But I cannot, I cannot, I'm not here to, to change minds. Mm -hmm. I'm here sitting down here speaking to you because people want to hear what I have to say. And here I am saying it. Will you reach out to the Dembes? If necessary, to, to, to convey condolences to on on anniversary, on her birthday. Um, you know, it, it's if my my interaction with the Dembes will, 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 will be to, will be around that of Anele and my connection to her. Um, I want to state that Another big tragedy of mine, and the thing that really hurts me as well, is that I was going to gain another family, you know? Not only was I gaining this beautiful wife for life, but I have also lost the opportunity to also become part of their family. And that hurts me very much. Given that desire then, don't you think you guys are due for some sort of conversation, especially with what everyone else is, is reporting and saying about your relationship. I think time will tell. I think give the Dembe family, the Forbes family time to grieve. Give us time to mourn. Let me, let me find a way to, 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 to fill this, this huge gaping hole in my, in my heart, in my life, and give them the same time as well. Kieran Forbes, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir.